Section 1 of the Book of Halloween by Ruth Edna Kelly Preface This book is intended to give the reader an account of the origin and history of Halloween, how it absorbs some customs belonging to other days in the year, such as May Day, Midsummer, and Christmas. The context is illustrated by selections from ancient and modern poetry and prose related to Halloween ideas. Ruth Edna Kelly, Lynn, 1919 Chapter 1 Sun Worship, The Sources of Halloween If we could ask one of the old-world pagans whom he revered as his greatest gods, he would be sure to name among them the sun god, calling him Apollo if he were a Greek, if an Egyptian, Horus or Osiris, if of Norway, Sol, if of Peru, Bochica. As the sun is the center of the physical universe, so all primitive peoples made it the hub about which their religion revolved, nearly always believing it a living person to whom they could say prayers and offer sacrifices, who directed their lives and destinies, and could even snatch men from earthly existence to dwell for a time with him, as it draws the water from lakes and seas. In believing this, they followed an instinct of all early peoples, a desire to make persons of the great powers of nature, such as the world of growing things, mountains and water, the sun, moon and stars, and a wish for these gods they had made to take an interest in and be a part of their daily life. The next step was making stories about them to account for what was seen. So arose myths and legends. The sun has always marked out work time and rest, divided the year into winter idleness, seed time, growth, and harvest. It has always been responsible for all the beauty and goodness of the earth. It is itself splendid to look upon. It goes away and stays longer and longer, leaving the land in cold and gloom. It returns bringing the long, fair days and resurrection of spring. A Japanese legend tells how the hidden sun was lured out by an image made of a copper plate, with saplings radiating from it like sunbeams, and a fire kindled, dancing, and prayers. And round the sun in North America the Cherokees believed they brought the sun back upon its northward path by the same means of arousing its curiosity, so that it would come out to see its counterpart and find out what was going on. All the more important church festivals are survivals of old rites to the sun. How many times the church has decanted the new wine of Christianity into the old bottles of heathendom? Yuletide, the pagan Christmas, celebrated the sun's turning north, and the old midsummer holiday is still kept in Ireland and on the continent as St. John's Day by the lighting of bonfires and a dance about them from east to west as the sun appears to move. The pagan Halloween, at the end of summer, was a time of grief for the decline of the sun's glory, as well as a harvest festival of thanksgiving to him for having ripened the grain and fruit, as we formerly had husking bees when the ears had been gathered, and now keep our own thanksgiving by eating of our winter store in praise of God who gives us our increase. Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit, lends us the harvest elements of Halloween. The Celtic day of summer's end was a time when spirits, mostly evil, were abroad. The gods whom Christ dethroned joined the ill-omened throng. The church festivals of all saints and all souls coming at the same time of year, the first of November, contributed the idea of the return of the dead. And the Teutonic May Eve assemblage of witches brought its hags and their attendant beasts to help celebrate the night of October 31st. End of chapter 1 Read by Professor Heather and Bye. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.